So, the only thing I wanted to point out about these ones that you did is for this last one, you should have got that x is equal to 1 or that x is equal to 5, which both seem valid, but why are they not both valid? X is equal to 1. Yeah, if x is equal to 1, this side would be 0 and this side would be minus 1 and this side would be 1, which is obviously not a triangle. So x cannot be equal to 1, hence me just having the answer of x equals 5 for that. Now, I'm actually going to pass on from exercise 9a, if you want to, well, you're going to do a couple of them for homework. I just think at this stage, it's cosine rule. You've seen it before. I wanted to refresh it, but I didn't want to spend like a whole amount of time on it. So I'm now going to move on, and we're going to have a look at the sine rule instead. Now, the sine rule. For this triangle that we've got here, we're going to try calculating each side divided by the sine of its opposite angle, and we'll see what we get. So I'm going to look at, first of all, this side here. That's its opposite angle. So I'm going to do the side divided by the sine of 65. Now, when I do 9.1 divided by sine 65, I get 10.0407. When I look at this side and I divide it by its angle, I get 5.02 divided by the sine of 30. So it's 5.02 divided by sine 30 and you get 10.04. And then when you look at this side, last of all, divided by the sine of 85, you get 10 divided by sine 85. And you get 10.0381, like this. So what do you notice about those answers? They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. But they're meant to be exactly the same, right? That's the point of the sine rule. The sine rule down here says when you do the side and you divide it by the sine of that angle, they should all be exactly the same as each other. So does anybody think they can spot what might have happened to not give us exactly the same value for these? Because they do give you the same value to two decimal places. Two decimal places, they all give you 10.04. But why, why are we not getting exactly the same for all three? The angles may not be accurately measured, but even more specific than that, I would say that these two sides here and here, do they, they appear to have been rounded, okay? Because especially this one that says 9.10, surely they, if it was 9.1, they would have just written 9.1. So when you see an extra zero at the end, it implies that some rounding has actually taken place. This extra zero suggests it has been rounded. And so if you ever see things in like, um, like scientific journals or physics or chemistry, there'll often be numbers and they might end in a zero. And it's there just to say, we've, we've rounded this. Like even if you had something and it rounds to a perfect whole number, you would still put in the point zero zero if you were rounding it to two decimal places. So these should give you exactly the same values but the reason why we don't is because this red one and this blue one here have had to have been rounded already, OK? And so that's what the sine rule is, where you take one of the sides divided by the sine of its angle, another side divided by the sine of its opposite angle, and another side divided by the sine of its opposite angle. They're all equal to each other. But when you use the sine rule, you don't tend to use all three of these, OK? You tend to just use two pairs, OK? You only need two pairs to be able to do this kind of thing. So I'm going to start off by having a look at a couple of examples that we've got here. So this one, you need the pairs to go together. So I've clearly got this one goes with this one as a pair. So I'm going to have x over sine 85 equals the other pair that I've got here is my 8 and sine 45. So it's equal to 8 over sine 45, which then tells me that x is equal to 8 over sine 45 multiplied by sine 85, like this. Can you, put it on the side of it? you can put it on the side of it. You could write it like this. But we know that these two things are equivalent to each other, OK? So well, that's 8 sine 85 divided by sine 45. And rather nicely, we come up with our answer of x is equal to 11.27.
and I've done that to, for some reason, I've switched over and I've done two decimal places. But whatever we want, we can do 11.3 to three significant figures. So this one here, you just need to be careful about using the right angles for this one. So which one does x go with? 100, so it's x goes with sine 100 because it's the opposite equals what? 8 over sine 30. If they gave you two of the angles, but one of the angles you needed you didn't have, what could you do? Just work it out. It's a triangle. Okay, if you get given two of them, remember you can always work out the third because the angles in a triangle out to 180. Okay, I told you this was going to be an easy lesson. So here we get that x is equal to 8 sine 100 divided by sine 30. And yeah, red one, you're right. We can write that to the side if that's what we want to do. Okay, so we've got 8 sine 100 divided by sine 30. And so we get that x is equal to 15.76 to two decimal places. There was a question in the year 13 mock exam that used sine rule and cosine rule. So that's why, even though you're probably like, oh, this is really easy, just want to make sure that we're all, we all know this can be tested. This will be coming up. Um, just if you want to, it's usually better to reciprocal, take reciprocals of the formula if you have a missing angle instead. So previously, we had a over sine a equals b over sine b. If we take reciprocals of this side and reciprocals of this side, you end up with that equation that we have over here. It tends just to be a bit easier, okay? If you put the missing value that you want in the numerator, it'll work out a little bit clearer. So these are just two examples where I've got some missing numerator, uh, some missing angles instead. So my first one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it this time and I'm gonna start off with sine alpha. What goes, what is over? Sorry, what is sine alpha over? It's sine alpha over five equals sine 85 over six. So sine alpha is either the way that red one would have written, written it, might have written this, but probably the way my brain thinks about this is I like to put the five at the beginning of the sign and write it like this. There's actually another way you could write this. Anyone got any other ideas that I could write this? Um, no cross multiplying really needed to do because I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put the six up there as well. A third way you could write this is like this: five sixths of sine eighty five. All these three things here they're all equivalent to each other. Just in case you ever see one of them and you think, what is that the same thing? They're all the same as each other because this one you're multiplying by five and dividing by six, multiplying by five and dividing by six, dividing by six and multiplying by five. So whichever of those you think is uh, you think is the easiest to deal with. So you get that sine alpha is 0 0.83, blah, blah, blah. So alpha is the inverse sine of that. And so alpha is 56.1 degrees. Hassan, what should my first line of working out look like for question four? Um, yeah. Good. Equals. Good. Try in the future, try and say sine instead of sin, okay? So you're going to get that sine theta is, oh, this is just the way my brain sees it, is 8 sine 126 over 10. So sine theta is. Sine theta is this, so theta is the inverse sine of this, which is 40.33. For some reason, I've switched back to doing one decimal place. Pretty straightforward, OK? I don't think we need to do much practice on this now. I think I'd probably rather have a look at doing the ambiguous case, which is something that is new. And then we'll do a couple of questions from that exercise. And then we'll then do the last bit of this. We're doing quite a lot of just rattling through the exercises here because hopefully this is just all like, yep, 
I know what I'm talking about here. 